Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And today we're uh, going to be talking about one of the neatest features that's available in the Dell EMC Power Store uh, storage arrays. Certain models, the X models, have something called Apps On uh, available to them. And it really takes what you know about a storage array and kind of turns it on its head more like a what, like a converged infrastructure, I suppose, at a certain point. Yeah, with hyperconverged, you're looking at uh, shared resources, networking, compute, and storage, and make of it what you will. With um, traditional storage, you have a storage array, you have your compute service sitting separate, but everyone realizes a lot of storage arrays are servers uh, just attached to storage, sure. and you, a lot of that gets masked behind the scene. Yeah, and it's interesting because you've got some of the convert the large converge infrastructures. You've got the HCI that Kevin's talking about. You've got uh, software defined, which really is software running on a server, for for lack of uh, better reference. Uh, but this is still really different. It's the storage being virtualized, but also taking the leftover or some extra resources on the compute and memory side and giving those to the user in a vSphere environment to run VMs on. I mean, it's it's just different. Yeah. And so what's still though, what's neat is that you get the engineering of the power store array. So you still get your dual controllers, you get the the bent metal that's nice and heavy and well, well ruggedized. You get uh, all the internal componentry, the SSDs across the front. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, and honestly, it's, it's using all the leftover components so it's not like you're making it slower. Right. Yeah, you're not taking anything away from the storage. You're just sort of reallocating the way these things come together. And so what we've been doing is we've worked with the uh, two power stores that we had that were T models. Now that's your more traditional uh, active active controllers, present the storage and off you go in your um, block and file world, just like you would with, uh, with most other storage arrays. But we worked with Dell EMC to reconfigure one of them into an X model. Now, you don't do this out in the wild. This is not a field. You can't. But we did. Well, it was more of they took it through the production cycle. (laughs) So we pretended like we were reproducing. I guess we actually did for all intents and purposes. It took quite a while. Redid our our model out here in the uh, Cincinnati field office and, and made it into an X. And here's what's interesting. As soon as it, as you bring this thing online as an X or out of the box as you would if you were a normal customer, I, talk about that experience. It's kind of dead simple, right? Yeah, if you're looking at the setup process for uh, the T versus the process for the X, I think there was like one extra screen it related into uh, your vCenter environment and uh, different IP ranges because you're you're no longer dealing with just like iSCSI. You're looking at like right. vMotion and other activities. Uh, you need to give it a couple more IPs, but... Like does one extra screen, uh, one extra screen. You give it a, um, you click like next. You run its uh, validate tool to verify you did everything correctly. And usually, the, like we forget one thing, but right? You click configure, and it's off and running for maybe fifteen minutes, and it builds everything in the background. And it's you don't really see a lot of that until the end. But I mean, it builds okay. out a lot of distributed virtual switches. It builds out uh, the new cluster. I mean, it, it does a lot of really cool stuff behind the scenes that like it doesn't require additional difficulty from you. Okay, and so we're left with two things then, right? We've got the the vCenter experience, and then we've got the PowerStore Manager from a software standpoint. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of that, and we'll show you kind of what our view of this is, how it uh, flows into your other data centers and VMware, and then what some of the management capabilities are and options are within the, uh, the PowerStore Manager. Okay, so in here we have our new data center 7000X. And I mean, you can you could pull this into another area, but you get your same vCenter experience. Right. So you set this one off to the side so as not to clash with our broader lab environment. Yeah. So it's off to the side, and uh, we can migrate things in and out. Um, right now, we have our uh, two hosts, and actually going back to this cluster view, to give you an idea of what you have uh, to play around with, you're talking about maybe 80 to 90 gigahertz of uh, CPU resource, which um, like that's a good amount. That's like two uh, silver, uh, you know, Xeon silver processors, or some something along those lines. So it's not like you're left with a micro PC of uh, resources to play around with. You're you have some pretty good uh, leftover uh, 
capabilities. Right. So I think we had 94 gigahertz in ours. And then talk about the RAM footprint, because there's a ton of RAM available, too, in this configuration. Yeah. So you're uh, right now we have around 720 or 750 gigs of uh, free uh, RAM, okay. which... It's almost a uh, Dell kind of double provision, uh, provision amount of RAM in these. Maybe they had sparing initially or a mirroring for it. But uh, in this case, only 384 is going per a uh, controller to the underlying storage okay. uh, VM. So you end up with more or less two servers or the capability of two servers with um, CPU and RAM and then, of course, access to the entire storage footprint. Yeah. Okay. And so it's interesting, though, because Dell really is positioning this as uh, a really interesting hybrid device for those environments where there could be large data collection, large data footprints, but maybe some space constraint. I mean, I was thinking of, you know, we hear all this um, uh, talk about oil and gas exploration where they've got these rigs in the back of a you know, Humvee or whatever, driving driving through Texas or someplace, um, running your analytics on your th- on your storage and having just a single box to manage, you know, could be compelling. There's yeah. a number of other use cases too. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking of uh, like a backup appliance, and you have something where you have your worker, which is trying to consolidate resources, running uh, dedupe compression on your uh, VMs before it shoots across the wire to a dedicated backup appliance. In this case, you could keep all those activities localized on the array itself, and mm-hmm. the only thing going over the wire and across multiple other switches from that point is your lower footprint data, uh, data reduced uh, network activity. So, some different opportunities. Let's get back to the uh, to the the look here. Yeah. So you have uh, all of your uh, main resources. When you look at the individual um, uh, hosts, you get to see the little. It's probably a little M.2. Uh, SSD for each controller, but uh, the main thing is you get your power store uh, shared storage, and this as, is as pres- a VVOL, right? Yes, as a VVOL. Um, and then uh, to give you an idea of what the back end uh, looks like for um, uh, the networking, it provisions all these um, uh, DVS uplinks. Which, I mean, if you were going through trying to configure this yourself, you might have you'd probably be using scripts to kind of sort this sort this one out. But in this case, it does it all behind the scenes, and it's just part of that uh, process when you're uh, when you first deployed it. But all this happened in a couple, maybe five ten minutes uh, for us, and it's just everything's available and ready to play around with. Yeah, I know it's so simple, but it strikes me that um, <laughs> it's just there in the vSphere client, and you had to do almost nothing extra to to get to this point. Yeah, and for virtualization guys, I mean, how plug and play is that? Yeah, I mean it, it's. It's almost so easy of a, like, why would you not want to use it? Well, I mean, I guess on the other side of the coin is if you could reduce the CPU and the RAM, maybe you could lower the, the bomb cost on the thing and maybe spend a little bit less. But um, Yeah, well, you don't have control over how it Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, when you think about every other storage array that we get in here, you don't get to necessarily pick and choose the CPU and the, the RAM, and, and, and then you certainly don't get this level of functionality. Yeah, and now when we go into um, the array management itself, you do get to, it's interesting that uh, you get to get a a little more visibility into um, uh, how things are running on that array's cluster. So here you get to see the uh, the hosts are part of that group. So the um, 7000X uh, node A and node B, uh, and then you get the initial type of iSCSI links for them. Um, But what's kind of cool is you get to see the virtual machines running on it. So these are the little uh, VCLS uh, VMs that E6i7 uh, places on, and then also our uh, VM that we moved over. But you get the visibility of what's uh, running on the storage from the storage GUI itself. So you moved a Server 2000 VM over just vMotion, that bad boy? Yeah, just one of our little... um, uh, low gens and I, I had to do a storage and compute view motion to bring it over. Um, but I mean, you you have a lot of interesting visibility that uh, you wouldn't really expect for just kind of like a little uh, add-on feature. This is, I mean, it's a full immersion. Yeah, and in our testing, you set up uh, a little SQL server action, move some SQL VMs over, and we're running full-fledged SQL on this thing. Yeah, you're going to have some shared resources ap- aspect to it. It's not going to be like you have a dedicated host just for your SQL server. So there will be some price some uh, performance overhead things to bring into it. But if you're looking at a, uh, maybe you can test that where it's like, hey, we need uh, resources that is probably the lowest priority thing down the totem pole, and but it's still a, a thing you have to buy. This might open up an area where, hey, well, we have a ton of RAM, we have some CPU, 
use this uh, use this area for test dev. Test dev, or even running some uh, some analytics. If you've got a if you've got a, a database there to be able to move your your SQL or MySQL or whatever your analytics program is in onto the machine, run it, move it off, and and carry on. Yeah. So when we look at the uh, the UI, then when you when you went to move over the you, you v motioned over the the one VM. Um, I guess that's the starting place for anyone in within vSphere, right? As you try to bring this into your environment and get workloads going. Yeah, you'd want to vMotion things on. Obviously, in our case, we hadn't uh, provisioned that vVol out to the other host, so uh, we were just stuck with whatever the uh, uh, VM kernel speed is of this, uh, this particular host to, uh, to the cluster moving over. But performance-wise, depending on how far you have this in, integrated in, um, you could just have like a compute vMotion, uh, something uh, relatively simple. If you don't have the connected storage, a little more complex, but the, like the option is there to move things across data centers to get it up and running on uh, this cluster. Yeah, so your experience with this versus the traditional uh, T model, what, I mean, obviously the apps on is the big deal, but anything else stand out to you in terms of no, usability or performance or anything? Everything's the same. I mean, it's just kind of like one day you didn't have this visibility, now you do. <laughs> right. So whether or not uh, apps on is for you is an entirely different uh, issue and something that you've got to think about in terms of the model, your data model. Does, does this make sense? But there are a lot of space constrained. There are a lot of uh, use cases like analytics where it may make sense to get that VM just snugged up nice and tight to your data run your workload and then move that data on and, and carry on with life. Yeah. So it's uh, it's something that's there. It's in the X. Uh, to Kevin's point, you've got to know if you're buying an X or a T going in. We kind of worked around the the edges and has not advised or supported. So don't don't try to bug your uh, your 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 sales guy for that one. Um, but it's a really neat application it's a neat integration and i'm looking forward to seeing you know, where this goes and now that it's out there what customers are going to do with this because that'll be a whole new light on this yeah kind of wonder if any other vendors will follow the uh, the lead i don't know i don't think it's that simple so anyway thanks for tuning into the video uh, any questions put them in the comments and uh, we'll get back to you thanks